Just by being a chamber member, you guys already have this program available to you. You may not know it exists or you may not know how to explain it, but that's what I'm here for. Um, a quick email to me with your logo and we can create a specific flyer similar to this one for your employees that you can pass down to your staff or present at a management meeting. Um, the main benefits of this program are savings for your staff. So we give them 25% off the closing costs. We give them a free appraisal. We back their earnest money up to $5,000 and we back their inspections up to $1,000. So to the actual employee, there's a potential of $7,500 in savings if they buy a house through this program. So it's a win-win. They get this great new awesome benefit. Um, and you guys can use it to attract new staff or retain current staff. It's up to the business owner how much you want our help with that program. So there's some businesses that say, hey, send us a flyer. We'll put it up in the break room and that's it. And then there's some businesses that say, hey, um, give us the link. We'll put the link on our website. We'll have you come every quarter and give a, a housing update. Um, and so we can do either of those examples. Um, Another cool benefit of this program is um, we can educate your staff through as much um, time as you would like. So we've done a lot through digital education that you can email out or we can set up presentations like this and talk in person. Um, what this is helping with is employee retention. So rather than you preaching that to your staff, it's nice to have a third party we want to preach how important it is from the loan side to be on your job for two years or more. So we're constantly preaching to your staff, stay on the job for two years or more so that you can get X benefit when you apply for a home loan. Um, so if they're hearing that from us and you, um, hopefully it sticks better. We all know employee appreciation equals employee loyalty. So this is just one more benefit that you can stack on top of your 401k or your health benefits or any other benefits that you're currently offering. Um, we all know employees choose benefits when all else is apples to apples. So that's a little bit about the employee mortgage program. Um, I'd love to talk to anyone individually with a small business of two employees all the way up to the hospital. Um, you guys all qualify for this and we can, we can make it personalized to your business. Um, other loan products that come up a lot in this area, um, I just want to touch on renovation loans are a big one. So if you're converting your house, um, adding a bedroom or just freshening it up, we do a lot of renovation loans. There, a lot of people have very low interest rates and they don't want to touch their primary mortgage because of that. So we have products that you can do a he loan or a he lock where you can access equity out of your house and use it to buy another house with or you could use it to improve your house or add a second bedroom or improve your um, existing bathroom. So we do a lot of renovation loans. Um, bridge loans are another one that are common up here. We, a lot of people want to buy a new house and they have a ton of equity in their old house, but they need to sell their old house in order to use that equity to buy the new house with. So we have a product called a bridge loan, which allows you to borrow that equity for the down payment on your new house and you can make a non-contingent offer on the new house as long as you qualify for both payments, the old house and the new house. So bridge loans are very uh, common and um, we don't do any short-term financing, but if you have the bridge loan for six months or more, it's okay, it's not considered short-term. 1% um, down payment advantage is a new program we just rolled out where a borrower can now buy a house with 1% down. Guild will cover the other 2% that's needed and um, so this is a great program for first time home buyers or employees. The cool thing about the employee mortgage program is you can stack any additional loans on top of it. So the employee mortgage program is to get your staff thinking about buying a house, thinking about staying here long term, not just seasonal. And you can also stack these great other programs on top of it. Um, so 1% down is a really cool new one that we have. Credit scores as low as 620, which is unheard of for down payment assistance programs. Um, and you don't have to be a first time home buyer to, to get this one. ITIN program is another one that we see often. So if you have staff that are working seasonal or they may not have a social security card or they may not be fully uh, resident, permanent residents, um, this is a program for them. As long as they have a work visa, we can get them into a house. 
The biggest thing is there's a big down payment associated, so they typically have to put 15% down, but there's a new program that allows them to buy a house and keeps them here full time. Um, so if you have any employees that aren't full citizens yet and they're working their tails off and they're driving and commuting from Reno, this is a great uh, thing to introduce to them, um, the I-10 program. Um, just to touch on the loan limits, every year loan limits go up. Same with prices typically go up. So um, conventional right now up in Truckee is 766. That's your conventional loan limit. Anything above 766 becomes a jumbo loan. Those are tougher to qualify for. They have higher interest rates and they have higher down payments. Um, but uh, FHA is another popular loan if you don't qualify for conventional based on credit score. Um, you can get an FHA, FHA loan up to 644. And that's uh, VA loan is also 766. The VA loan and the FHA loan are two loans that are assumable. So if you if your neighbor has a 2.99 interest rate, and they have a VA loan and they're moving out of town, an employee or anybody can assume that loan. Even if they're not in the military, they've never had any VA experience, any regular person can assume a VA loan and take on that great rate and stay here. Um, so that's something that isn't common knowledge. You can also do that with FHA loans. You cannot do that with conventional loans. So if you have a great rate on a conventional loan, you have to sell or do a bridge loan and, and get the next buyer in. But VA and FHA are assumable. And then we have jumbo products all the way up to 10 million. Um, and what really sets us apart is we service our own loans. We don't sell them. So a lot of you that are currently homeowners, you may have had your loan sold to another company or sold once or twice, or now Mr. Cooper has it. That's a real company. Um, I get that question quite a bit. Is, is this legit? Is this real or is this fraud? It's Mr. Cooper is asking me for my mortgage. Um, but we don't sell our loans, we service them. So we wanna be your lender for life. We have incredible products. Once you have a loan with us, we have you on a rate watch software to watch when it makes sense to refi. We show you cool graphics of what you can do with the equity in your house, how you can buy a second home or an investment property. Um, a lot of people exit their primary residence to buy a new primary to convert their old primary into an investment property. That's the financial hack. That's the best way that you can get the lowest rate on an investment property. Um, so we see a lot of people doing that. And our alternative loan programs on the right is kind of what sets us apart. Those are the 1% down, the I-10, the jumbo loans. We also do reverse mortgages, which are an incredible product for the right person. Um, and so a little bit about rates. Rates, have, as you've seen maybe or heard, rates are trending down. They're falling right now. Um, not as quick as we would like. The feds are expected to cut the fed fund rate next month. Um, but the market is already baking in those um, cuts, and so rates are now in the mid to low sixes, which we were in the high sevens not too long ago. So it's a good time to buy. You can even buy down into the high or low 5% interest rate range. So it feels like we're back to a normal market. Pre-COVID, this was normal. During COVID, it was completely fake. The feds were pumping $2 billion into mortgage-backed securities every morning to keep the housing market afloat. And so um, we will never see 2.0 or 3.0% rates anytime soon, in my opinion. Um, so four, fives, and sixes are the new normal. Um, one quick, another hack that I like to share with people is this, this graph. It's called a seller credit. And when a buyer goes to buy a house, the common assumption is that, hey, if I lowball them on price, I'll get the better deal. And that's not always the case. If you have a $700,000 house, it's better to make a $700,000 offer and ask for a $20,000 seller credit than it is to give them a $680,000 offer. You're going to save about $500 more if you give them a full price offer with a seller credit than you would if you lowballed them on price by, by the same amount. So this graph, is, um, this, uh, this graph shows that at any price point it works. So at 500,000 or 5 million, it's the same. Um, but you can see a normal full price offer with no seller credit, there's no savings. If you reduce the price by $20,000, you've saved almost $100 a month. 
if you get that money in seller credit versus reducing the price, you've saved almost 500 a month. And even if you can only get half that and get $10,000 seller credit instead of 20, you're still saving $350, $325. Um, so seller credit is something that I like to point out to people. If you want to get the best deal, get a seller credit. Don't necessarily just um, try to reduce the price. Um, one last graph to show you. This is home appreciation over the last almost 100 years since 1942. Housing is still a really safe bet. Every single year you can see that prices increase, your home appreciates, um, except for about six years. Um, in 1990, you see there was a one, negative 1% 1 home appreciation. Obviously in 07, we had the housing crash. That was a bad time to sell. But if you sat on that house by 2012, you're appreciating again. Um, and coming off 2021, you're seeing record appreciation, 19% if you bought in 2021. Um, so people are sitting on the most equity they've ever sat on in American history. More people have more equity now than ever before. And that's why I talk about those bridge loans or the home renovation loans or ways to pull equity out without touching those low interest rates. A lot of people don't want to sell and they don't want to improve their home because they don't want to touch their low interest rate. Um, but housing is still a safe bet. No matter what year you get in, you're, you're almost guaranteed to appreciate. And I'll take questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next up we're gonna hear from Lori, uh, who's gonna talk about an insurance update and also the California Fair Plan. Okay, I'm Lori Bradford from uh, Oakview Insurance Services, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the FAIR plan today, um, or the not so FAIR plan. <laughs> so uh, just to start off, just a little history. Um, they were created, the FAIR plan was created in the, in the 60s due to the riots and fire issues, primarily in Southern California. It's not a state-run agency, um, a group or an association of all the admitted carriers in California uh, actually created the California Fair Plan, and it was not intended at all to be uh, a primary resort. It was to be the last resort, um, but here we are now. So uh, what does it cover? It covers your fire, lightning, internal explosions, smoke, wind, vandalism, and malicious mischief. And those are options that you can choose to purchase or not. That's what makes the Fair Plan a little different. You can cater it to what you're insured um, is wanting at the time or what is needing, uh, what they need. You do need to have the difference in coverage policy in place. This picks up the rest of the perils, such as theft, water damage, and liability. Um, so that makes you whole. With the FAIR plan and the DIC difference in coverage, you now have a traditional homeowner's policy in place. But you do need both um, in order to have that uh, occur. So as of February uh, this year, the FAIR plan was receiving over 900 applications a day. Um, and the uh, journal, insurance journal just last week put out an article that they're now over 1,500 applications a day. So obviously this is creating um, a lot of chaos in, in our world, um, but it's also creating chaos in our preferred and admitted markets or non admitted markets because They've also tightened their underwriting criteria, so age of home, um, obviously location of home, all these things um, are mat matter on what, what kind of options we have. So the FAIR plan also moved in conjunction with all their new applications. They also moved to a new quoting and servicing platform in November. So not only is it causing this growing pains, but it is very much backlog. So the, the new system is just the communication is poor with the agents. So whether it's a change request, whether it's a new submission, we, it's kind of undetermined on when that will actually come through, which I'll touch on here shortly. But So the rules, uh, limitations uh, to the FAIR plan, as you may all be aware, we need one photo of the house and one photo of the address. Um, 
These are supposed to be taken within one week of the application and they do not uh, want listing photos. They want it, you know, just a cell phone photo or whatever that they can see the date stamp. Sometimes we can get creative, but for the most part, um, we've got to have those photos within one week of the submission. Homes with roofs older than 25 years are covered under actual cash value. There are some exceptions, but the policy would have to be issued first. Then we can demonstrate whether it's a metal or tile roof. We submit that for approval. But again, let me be transparent, that approval or that credit or the transition from actual cash value to replacement, that could take four weeks, it could take three months. It, it's un, we don't know when we're gonna actually get them to approve it. So, um, and then mobile homes. Those are typically care, uh, covered under actual cash value, but the way the FAIR plan works is you actually have to endorse or purchase the extended replacement, and they use that as a buyback on the actual cash value. So then you end up with dwelling replacement value, which is a weird way. Why wouldn't you just endorse it for dwelling replacement? But it's the FAIR plan, so. So once uh, an application is approved, the earliest the policy can start is the day after payment is received. So the borrower typically needs to make a payment to start the policy, and then we can bill the rest um, to escrow or, or title um, if it's a new purchase. Um, and I will say they also introduced an 11 pay structure versus the three pay, which does help with that. So it's a little bit less down to get the policy started. Applications, they're only good for 30 days. So if you request a start date after 30 days, we have to start the process all over again. New application, new photo, and then that starts the clock. And I say that because it's kind of one of the most important things I'll touch at the very end, but uh, they do offer some discounts. They offer the Firewise community. So if your community has that designation, uh, there is a 10% discount. Um, off the wildfire portion of premium. Home hardening discounts, these were released in August of 2023. Uh, they've been slow to approve uh, due to this move to this new online platform they have, um, and also they're inundated with applications, changes. So even though you may qualify for some of these discounts that we're gonna talk about, it may take a few months for them to A, approve it or B, deny it. They basically are the ones who ultimately will decide if you qualify. It doesn't hurt to submit, but they, they will make that decision. So the structure discount of 10% is a class A fire rated roof, meaning comp, shingle, stone, concrete, clay tile, or metal. Uh, six inches at the bottom of all exterior walls made of non-combustible material. Ember and fire resistant vents, wire mesh covering, upgraded windows, multi paned enclosed eaves, and then the immediate surrounding area discount, which I think we're a little bit more familiar with, is the one that's uh, that defensible space. So we're talking about cleared vegetation and debris from under decks, a five foot ember resistant zone around the home, including fencing within five feet, Removal of combustible sheds and other outbuildings from the immediate surroundings of the home to at least a distance of 30 feet. And then the defensible space compliance um, in accordance with the, the California Public uh, Resource Code. So with that, <laughs> the two main things that when I think of the, the California Fair Plan is number one, time. Because we are seeing that if, if someone enters a 30 or 45 day escrow, the insurance can't keep up with that. We, we need more time. So as soon as a property, whether you're listing it, whether you have a potential buyer, the first question really should be, what is this gonna cost us? Because it can be a deal breaker. Um, and that's the last thing anyone wants to do is waste their time, the buyer's time, the seller's time, or your time, because this has now become the number one topic. I mean, it's just as important, I would think, Taylor, as your pre-qual letter is understanding what is it going to cost to insure this property. And, and we are seeing, I mean, even in a standard residential area that you would think, okay, no problem, everything is bogged down. It could take three, four, six weeks for us to get a firm, yes, this is the policy that we can provide you. And then, as I noted, it's only, the fair plan's only good for 30 days. 
So if we, if the escrow gets pushed out 15 more days, we got to get that ball rolling again because it could be another 30 days till we get that new quote. Um, the other thing, number two, which I think is huge, is how the fair plan insures. They do on sure on what we call insurable value, which means I'll give this example. You get a husband and wife that come in to the office and they want to, they own their home. We issue the policy in their names. Six months down the, lo, down the line, they're doing some estate planning. They add their daughter to the deed. Okay. They don't think of notifying their insurance. Why would they? This is their primary home. Fire comes through, burns their house to the ground. Their names are the only ones on the policy, but the deed, because the fair plan will pull it up, has three people listed. The husband and wife or the mom and dad will only get two thirds because there's three people listed on the policy. They pay out on insurable interest. So the way the policy read has to match exactly how the deed reads or they, there'll be a shortfall. So that becomes really important, which is kind of, it's kind of crazy because when is the, when's the agent and when do most people know, oh, I added something or I changed something to my deed. It's not their first thought to let their insurance person know, but it to me is critical that we get that information out there so everyone realizes, okay, if they make any kind of transition that the, that the policy needs to follow. So I think that's all I have. <laughs> All right, do we have any questions for any of our speakers? Yeah, Jan. At the very end of this last presentation, what happens if the homeowners change the title from, their, from themselves individually to their living trust? Still the same? Correct, you still want to have your policy amended. You still want to notify your insurance agent that the, that the deed now reads in the name of the trust because the fair plan will amend it to show the trust is the named insured. And what if you haven't done that when your house burns down? I'm sorry? What happens if, if the individuals haven't done it and the house burns down? Well, I would imagine when it pertains to a trust, that would become, as long as the trust is designating the two trustees that are in the property, that you should be fine. But I still would advise I would not run that risk with the California Fair Plan because just like all the carriers, they're looking for reasons not to pay. So. Yeah. And then one question for Mr. Russo, are any of these programs uh, federal or state programs that the guild simply took on or, or are they all just Those are all, they're all guild programs, everything okay. I covered today. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have a question for Taylor. Yeah. So with ADUs, considering how town or Truckee would really like us to have more ADUs, has town and guild had conversations as to what loans could be needed, uh, asked for? Yes, yeah, we're, and we're actually a preferred lender um, also for, for the For ADUs of, especially? Yep. So what does that program look like? We can do any ADU up to a four unit. So as long as it's uh, a single, a duplex, a triplex, or a fourplex, we can lend on it. That's considered residential lending. We so can do just, manufactured okay. So it goes hand in hand with the residential loan. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Marissa. Lori, is the fair plan in if someone's looking to get fire insurance on a new purchase? Is that all people in our community would be able to access right now or is there other options? <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> and, and that, actually, I would like to just touch on that. It's a great question, but I would say that, yes, currently right now, uh, for a new purchase, the fair plan in our area is, is the only game in town. Uh, I get a lot of phone calls where people are upset that their rate went up 30% because, you know, whether they're with Allstate or Nationwide or whoever it may be, and when they call and they say, I'm upset, I want to change, right now, is not the time to change. This is not a climate that you want to shop rate. If you've got a, an admitted preferred carrier, you want to stay with them and work with that agent on higher deductibles. Because I'll tell you why. It gives the new carrier, if you say, even if you find a rate that's less expensive, you move to that new carrier. That carrier has 60 days to evaluate your home and decide whether they want to stay on it or not. So they could then say, never mind, we don't want to write it. 
you can't go back to who you just canceled with because they're not writing you anymore and then you're going to be left with a fair plan. So that's the best piece of advice I can give is that if you're with an admitted carrier, work with your agent on deductibles or any other type of changes to the policy that can help with the premium because you, you do jeopardize that you could end up with a fair plan because writing brand new, that's, that's what we have. Any lap? Yeah, go ahead. We've got lots of time for questions, so okay. <laughs> please ask away. Go ahead. <laughs> um, for the employee mortgage program, can yeah. your employees be in any state, or do they need to be? Yeah, they can state? be in any state. We just can't do New York, but um, <laughs> I, I have. Why? I did Macy's. I got Macy's approved, <laughs> so we're we're partnered with Macy's. They're everywhere, um, but we did it out of the Reno Macy's down in Nevada. Um, so yeah, you can be nationwide. It, it applies to anyone. That's cool. Any other questions? Yep. Go ahead. What is the max snow load on the town of Truckee, Woodland? Um, the ADUs. The what's our max snow load that we need to? Hold on, I'm looking at. She's it. looking it up. probably right there. Four, 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 range, four to four fifty range. Yeah. Thank you. At the very top. Yeah, we have on our ADU page four hundred and eighty, which mm -hmm. has like the very highest, but I don't so. know how many that is. No other qu yep, go ahead. <laughs> uh, my question is for Lori. Um, do you have any idea what are the impacts to your premium when you're adding an ADU to your property? Mm -hmm. Well, um, it'll be for that structure. So it becomes a detached structure, depends on the usage of it, if it's gonna be just a second, you know, or a guest home, or is it gonna be rented out? But most homeowner policies do account for adding an additional unit, and you would just, whatever, you know, the cost of replacement cost estimator on that structure, we would, you would wanna, you know, just increase the coverage on your detached portion. I will say the fair plan, if it is, if it does have a cooking unit, you would actually have to issue a separate policy for that unit. You cannot endorse the existing primary because it has a cooking um, facility. Thank you. Hmm. I have an extraneous ADU question. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, in Truckee, will we be taxed on the entire project when we get reassessed, or would we just get reassessed on the new structure. Cool. Did you hear that? Yeah, so it's California, so it's the new structure only. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Anyone else? I'm finding if I wait a second, someone else has a question. Yeah, go ahead. There was an article in, I don't know if it was Moonshine Inc. or Tahoe, about Nevada now experiencing the same thing, especially in Incline Village. Are you seeing that other states besides us Westerners here, like Idaho and Utah? Oregon. And Oregon? I also do Oregon and Nevada, and it's the same thing. That these, it's slowly dripping into both states, right? Not slowly, it's, it's quickly dripping yeah. into Nevada. Um, a lot of our high-end like <coughs> golf course neighborhoods are all getting cancellation letters on our insurance. Even golf course. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. There was a big article about Florida recently too. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone pulling out of there. My parents lived in Florida. They're, they're struggling with the insurance stuff down there. It was all for them when they bought the house. Yeah. Yeah, in the back. Uh, for your insurance on your primary residence, can they cancel it? whatever based on fire yes they can choose to just because it no longer is part of their appetite um so they absolutely can do it for you know whatever reason what we're seeing most like so i'm an independent agent so i work with a lot of different carriers but what we'll see is they just passive aggressive like here's this huge list of things that they need you to do in order to be compliant which is unrealistic some of it you know if it's only two or three items I try to encourage people, try to get it done, try to work with your broker, ask, hey, if we have it set up, a put down payment on the new roof, will they, you know, you know, extend that renewal? Um, but absolutely, they can choose to stop writing at any time. Um, it's, it would be at your renewal. They can't do it midterm. They can only do it at, 
you're now being non-renewed at whatever your effective date is. And is that notice still 60 days or less? Well, on a non-renewal, you most likely would see that. I would, I would think more like uh, 90 to 180 days out. They'll be, they'll be aggressive and let you know on the non-renewal. If it's a brand new issue, yeah. then they have that shorter time period to evaluate and get off the risk. David, and then, yeah. Um, I, I, it might be a Taylor question, but you, you showed a chart that showed for nearly 100 years that real estate was always a good investment because things went up. Two-part question. One is, have we ever been faced with a situation before where the cost of maintaining the property was as high as it is now? And if we project where we are now into the future, is this sustainable or do you anticipate we get to a point where people just realize that, that buying a home, buying the home is not the issue, it's, it's affording to stay in the home that becomes the issue and then we see a reverse in the values? Uh, well, that graph was a national average. So there's a lot of markets that are still, you know, under, Truckee is unique in that we are just sky, you know, the prices are just going through the roof. But over the national average, um, it's not as bad as that. I do think this is unsustainable. I do think the costs are just insane and the inflation and the things contributing to, to all of these uh, factors, I think is, it can't sustain itself. <coughs> Um, but housing, for whatever reason, we're all humans, we all need shelter, and um, there's more, it's a supply and demand issue, there's way more demand than supply, so there's always going to be this demand issue of people that have the ability to get into a house, have the ability to, to you know, pay a little bit more than the next person. So I think it's a supply and demand thing that there's still too much people that need homes and want to buy homes, you can't build them fast enough to really reduce prices at this point. So I think prices keep going up. I don't know how long that timeline is, but. Have you seen any, sorry for just a follow up, but um, in an area like ours, which has a resort component to it, where homes end up just being cash purchases from people who don't care about fire insurance because they're just gonna pay cash for the whole thing, and do we start to trend toward that kind of ownership well I think people even care when they buy cash I I know a, a deal going uh, through right now with a realtor her person is buying cash they've extended the close date twice because he can't get insurance and he's paying cash he could close the deal but he won't take ownership until he has insurance he doesn't want a five million dollar asset to just burn up right. so I think cash right. regardless of cash people still want insurance and the insurance I don't know. That's that's a messy one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but on that deal that you're talking about, the California Fair Plan only goes up at three mil, so mm -hmm. he's still out of pocket too. Yeah, we got to get supplemental. There is supplemental to go on top of that. Mm -hmm. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's just it's kind of like a tier. So you, you have the the base of the fire plan, and then you or the fair plan, and then you have add on an additional policy for that shortfall. It's just finding the market and the carriers that are willing to take that $2 million risk um, on the dwelling. And there, there lies it, and that changes daily for us. I mean, literally, our world is changing by the hour. That we, one day, okay, we got something through, the next day we're not, um, and so, we just ask, that's why I just think time. <laughs> the more time you give the agent, the better, because it's it's a very uh, toxic climate right now. And, it, and it's hard. I know we all take it personally, because we've worked hard, we have our homes, we and now our insurance carriers, we've paid this rate for so long, and um, but unfortunately, the fires haven't helped, and we were in a, we were in a time frame where for about six, years we had a lot of fires in a concentrated area in California so when the governor puts a moratorium on the carriers not leaving or not taking rate we now got bottlenecked because it kind of tiered on top of each other for about six seven years and now we have this explosion of these carriers they're getting underwritten by their reinsurers those reinsurers are dictating you can't be that high percentage in a, in a wildfire area You've got to reduce your exposure so that's why you see state farm pulling out and other carriers not writing new 
because their reinsurers are dictating that. And then if they are allowed to take rate, now we're all like, what the heck? Why, why am I up 50%? Um, it's just been, it was bad timing. I don't know, perfect storm, but we're in a mess. That's for sure. Uh, here and then in the back. I got invested in the tangent and completely forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So knowing that the California Fair Act was intended to be a last resort, but we're getting 1,500 applicants a day, what is the state doing to plan to sustain or expand this programming? Or I mean, how sure is this California Fair plan, or is this also gone for years? So the, the positivity, I guess, about the fair plan is it's actually it's just an association of all the California uh, admitted carriers. So your nationwide, State Farm, all state, they own it, but they own it by a smaller percentage. And so that just brings me comfort because they're financially sound and, and, and they're, my assumption is they have their reinsurers that if there's a shortfall that we're going to be fine. Now what the state's doing, you know, it, it's tough because they, they talk about, like they put out a big article about how all the discounts that the fair plan is offering. Well, it's incredibly difficult to even get any of these discounts in place. They talk about, okay, we limited them to a 15% rate increase. Well, that was an average. The most areas, such as Truckee or a high fire zone, we are seeing 50, 60 to 100% rate increases. And so, it, to me, it, it's a lot of politics that go into play. Do I think there needs to be a subsidized program? Absolutely, because you're, what you're talking about, people aren't going to be able to, A, afford the home they're in or, continue, or, or even purchase. Um, I don't know personally anything that's actively being done. Um, we do hear every once in a while, and we do get a little trickle of a couple new carriers, but they're really just intended for, you know, downtown, Sacramento or an area that's, you know, not full of trees. And <laughs> <laughs> Any last questions? Go ahead. First time home buyer. Um, with the fires, say the past fire we just had, or the fire in Burnite, or the fires in Corcola, what do you envision that doing for rates for next year's renewal? <laughs> 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 for, say, the neighborhoods surrounding those <laughs> well, I think the interesting part is that I think these recent fires fortunately haven't burned a lot of structures, so that's positive. Um, but it's not positive that they're still occurring, and that therein lies, I don't see it really affecting a, a great deal. Rates are probably going to stay where they are, and maybe, you know, they'll increase, but it's not going to be based on the loss, because that's how they base their rate, right? Is, is, is the loss, and unfortunately, we didn't have a whole lot of structures um, that burned. All right, Katie, last question. Right, I'm kind of piggybacking on Marissa's question, mm. but um, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> we are um, only had California Fair Plan as our only option, and um, just had the representative come up last week and take photos. So I have sort of a two-pronged question. Why were we not allowed to take photos ourselves? She had to come up, and she actually delayed coming up because we had a fire the week before, and our neighborhood was in the evac zone. Um, so Marissa's as well. So I'm wondering if that's like a strike against you, even though we, I can check almost all the boxes up here for the discounts, and hopefully she noted all of them, but we didn't, you know, we haven't actually gotten the quote, although we got a quote a year ago and it was pretty affordable. So I think she came up now to verify. And then my follow-up to that is, so is this a really bad time of year to be getting California Fair Plan in place? And is it better to do it in winter months or spring months when there aren't fires raging nearby? That actually doesn't, it, it doesn't matter um, as far as when you purchase it. There's not a better time to purchase. Uh, versus you know, if you don't have fire coverage, then I would say today's the best time to purchase, right? <laughs> but, um, and they all do ins what they call inspection. So if you have a fair plan or really any homeowner's policy in place, most of the carriers now are switching to every year they're going to come out and they're going to take photos, especially if you have indicated any of those discounts that we listed. They're going to want to see that there's proof of those things occurring. Whether there's an active fire or not should not affect the discounts and it should not affect the ability to to issue the policy now once a policy is in place if you choose to endorse the policy 
you have it's not the increase in coverage is not in effect for five days so a lot of people when a fire starts they start looking at their coverage do I have enough on contents do I have enough and if they make that can do it when there's an active fire but the increase in coverage doesn't go into effect until five days after the premium is paid all right well now that we're all um in really great mood, uh, we're going to go ahead and switch gears a little bit and hear from our nonprofit highlight. Uh, so Ron Hess with Truckee Soar. Why don't you come up and tell us a little bit about Soar? Aren't you glad you came, Lori? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Soar Truckee or Truckee Tahoe Soaring Association teaches kids how to fly. We do rides and instruction, so if you're interested in coming out, we use the revenue from our rides and instruction to fly our youth. They learn, uh, they learn uh, how to operate the plane, how to calculate the weight and balance, how to um, actually earn their, earn their wings. So, um, so I got a couple of numbers to share with you. Well, we have eight line crew. And throughout the throughout the season, we operate from May through October, and um, these kids you may have even seen them. How many have seen the planes flying over Highway 267 when you're driving? Some of those are kids, <laughs> age 14 to 18. Now they're not all. They, they, you start out with an instructor. You do most of your flights with an instructor. So we have a, 128 flights out of there this year with with, with students in our STEM program. Uh, that's 52 hours of flight instruction, and of those eight uh, students, uh, three of them uh, have t have taken their solo. So we think that's a really great number, and uh, so it's very exciting. You can come out and see us. We've been out at the airport there for about 30 years. We've been a nonprofit for about eight years, and uh, we recently rejoined the Chamber of Commerce. So I'm out here uh, to to say, come out, come out, see see us operate see the kids flying and uh, come and take a ride and or a lesson and we'd love to we'd love to have you out there so that's my my quick my quick any questions about our program all right hope to see some of you out there and uh, learn how to fly yourselves <laughs> all right um, does anyone have any stump speech that they would like to share with the group I know Barry does <laughs> Morning, everybody. Um, giving my uh, stop back pain university class again. It's a great class. It's aimed at really kind of giving you the tools to help you heal and keep your back healthy. Um, there's also a two for one coupon, and the two for one coupon is great because it makes it cheaper. But even more important, if you come to the class with somebody else, the compliance of doing all the rehab, the exercise, and the stretching, and all that stuff goes up exponentially. It just makes you more successful and healthy. That's it. Thank you. David? Hi, I'm David Diamond again from the Truckee Tahoe Airport Board. I am running for re-election this November, and I'm here to announce that and to ask for everyone's support. Here's my stuff. I've got these little cards here. Uh, late last year, I asked our airport board to uh, allocate $2 million for fire mitigation throughout the region, Truckee and North Tahoe. And thanks to unanimous support of my board mates, including Cat Golf, um, who's sitting right there. Um, <laughs> uh, Truckee Fire, North Tahoe Fire, North Star Fire, and Olympic Valley Fire now have the money that they need to, pre to finish projects that were previously unfunded. Um, that, to me, is an example of what the airport district is capable of doing when it's in the guidance of people who are thinking about the entire community who funds it. Um, and I would like to see it continue on that trajectory. So diamond2024.com is my website. If you could visit, learn more about what I've been up to, what I hope that we can do in the future, um, and endorse and donate, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other sub speeches? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, my name, uh, again, Dean Nicholson with East Fork Roofing, uh, one of the newer members uh, to the chamber. Uh, ironically or coincidentally, um, <laughs> One of the reasons I came up today was to talk about um, rooftop snow removal. So uh, we're, uh, we're looking to uh, either in Tahoe Donner, um, any of the HOAs that may have uh, a connection, 
that we can get in front of them and, and help relieve some of that uh, pressure on the house. But um, I've got my cards here. If anybody wants any information on uh, snow removal on the rooftop, we also do roof repair, new, re uh, new roofs, roof replacement, all of that. So um, just thanks for having me. Anyone else? I don't want to think about snow yet. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Farla Michelle. Uh, I run NEAI. It's an AI and automation company. So if anyone is interested in what is AI and how it can help your business grow um, or automation, please come talk. Cool. Anyone else? Okay, I have two for the chamber. We have our networking mixer this Thursday uh, from 5 to 7 at HSH Interior, so we hope to see you guys there. And then next Thursday, we have a community connections event at uh, the Truckee Winery, so that's going to be super fun, $20 for snacks and four wines and great community connections, so you can find both those things on truckee.com. All right, are we ready for the door prize? Yes. Yay. So much energy. <laughs> woo, woo. Okay. Uh, so first up, we have a return ticket to Good Morning Truckee. Cap. Yeah. Yeah. And next up is a Truckee Love sticker, and it's going to Taylor. All right, and then we have a $15 sustainable gift card from Visit Truckee Tahoe, which is good at over 60 merchants in town. Ah, uh, Ted Owens left. Someone tell him he doesn't get his prize. <laughs> David, if you want to text him. First he went an MC for me, and now he leaves early. All right, Justin from Tahoe Mountain Realty. You still here? Oh, he just walked out. Must be present to win. He might have even heard that. Running back in. Anna. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,